What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to uh, my channel, another video of mine. Today, I got requested by somebody in the comments of one of my previous videos to do like a little rundown of Adobe Illustrator. So we're gonna do that today, so you know what I'm saying? Let's get right into it. Just picking our file size, let's just do something random. Okay, so. Oh, this is my first face cam, by the way. Let me know how y'all like it. Got a new mic. I'm upgrading the quality a little bit. Let me know how it sounds. So, yeah. Let's get back into the video. So, we're going to do a basic slow tutorial of what I use on a daily from, Illust from Adobe Illustrator. <laughs> Excuse me. I don't know what everything does because it takes a... I'm still learning. I'm still a student. It takes a long time to learn these programs like Adobe, Photoshop, and Illustrator. So I'm gonna just show you what I know, okay? First off, first things first. Well, let's get the object here, okay. So you can see, all right. You have the selection tool right here. I'm gonna move my control bar right here so y'all can see a little better. So right here, if you have all your tools, you feel your stroke, you know what I'm saying? So, right here you have your selection tool. The keyboard shortcut for it is V. So you can select the object, you can select multiple objects if you click and drag. You see I selected both of these uh, boxes right here. You can select one, hold shift and select the other one. So you can select both at the same time. That's pretty much, just to the selection tool, it's, it's self-explanatory. All right, now we're about to move into the direct selection tool. So with the direct selection tool, you directly can select points. So what separates Photoshop from Illustrator is you working with vectors. So basically, you working with points that connect two different places, and when they connect, they make a shape. Two points from point A to point B is a line and the close shape close points excuse me is a shape so you can directly select points so let's go here zoom in and we can see oh when the point is white that means it's not selected but if I go in here and click it and now it turns blue that means it's selected so now what I can do with the direct selection tool is I can manipulate this point on this box so I can move it up here, down here, move right here, do some weird stuff with it. What you can also do, just like this selection tool, you can select multiple points. So I selected these two up here to make it like this. Hold and drag. Also, what you can do is, uh, oh yeah, if you delete it, what I did just now on accident, if you delete, when you just selected one point and you delete that one point, you only delete that point. So, if that makes any sense. Let's make a uh, circle. So, so, what you do with the direct selection tool is you can also manipulate these handles on the points. Which is basically how you make the curve. So, you can you do that. Yeah. that uh what i'm doing to go back from when i make a mistake is i uh press ctrl and z together it's it's pretty uh common knowledge but you might not know that you know uh bread and butter of photoshop in my opinion is i mean illustrator my bad is the pen tool so click from one point to another point to another point Close a point, now it's a shape. But if you do this, it's a path. See the difference? Uh, the curvature tool 
you can curve paths. Right? So that was just a straight path just now, and I used a curvature tool to make it this circular um, shape. I could also use it with shapes. I could also use it with shapes. So if I get this shape right here, and I add a point, I could add a curve to the shape. So yeah, real simple. Real simple stuff. Uh, let's see. We got the type tool. So press the type tool on the keyboard. On the keyboard is T. It's pretty simple. You just press it. You type out whatever. You need to type. Self-explanatory. You have the line segment tool, which basically instead of using points, you just click and drag to make a line. It's just a little faster than using the, the pen tool. So you just create lines like this. Nice and simple. Uh, you have your width tool. I like, I like this tool a lot. If you can't tell, I use this with a lot of my designs. So you can click a point and drag to change the width of the path that you choose. So yeah, what you can do is play around with it, make it small here, make it fatter here, make it really wide here, you know, you can just play around with it. Uh, then you have your pencil tool. Basically, you drawing out a path <clears throat> and it automatically smooths it for you just a little better. But then you also have a smoothing tool so it can just get, you know what I'm saying, that slightest bit better for perfectionists. Yeah, you have that. <clears throat> You're basically drawing. So with the, with the pen tool, you make straight paths. You can click and drag the pen tool, but that gets a little finicky. It gets a little hard to do. Just click and drag. So what you can do is you can just grab the pen tool, the pencil tool, and you can just draw out that path right there. Simple, simple enough. You have the eraser tool which basically erases paths and, and two shapes. So if I have this circle here, and I erase, boom. Now it becomes two shapes, because I erase right through the middle of it. You have your shape builder tool. So I'm going kind of fast, I'm just trying to get this out of the way. <clears throat> you have your shape builder tool, right? So if you use the selection tool, select both objects, Right, you go to your shape builder tool. You can build each part of the circle can be its own shape. So if I just click on it, on each part of shape, and now I can separate them, and now they are their own shapes. Pretty easy, pretty simple. Or what I can do is I can select all of them, and I can hold Option, and then get rid of the negative space. And then, yeah, now this is on shape, cut out. Let's see. Oh, free transform tool. I use this for Y2K logos a lot to kind of, hold on, let's put this toolbar back. Distort and italicize the circles or the logos. So now it's just like over their shape. Pretty simple, pretty simple. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I use. And I use, there's a more, more advanced stuff in Illustrator, but that's pretty much 
the simple stuff I can show you right now. And I can use all of what I just showed you to make, uh, I guess let's do a Y2K logo. So those are pretty popular. So let's start off with a word. Bro, my favorite Y2K uh, font is Octuple Max Solid. I don't know why it just it just looks good to me, you know. So what we can do is That's how you say the font is Octuple Max Solid. So we're just gonna roll with Octuple. I think that's how you say it, Octuple. And the way you wanna edit, um, if you wanna edit type, what you can do is you can make it outline. So you can scroll down here on properties, all the way down to quick actions and create outlines. You can also go to um, object, expand, create outlines, but that's just the easier, faster way to do it. So yeah, October, what we can do. So we're gonna go into my asset pack. It's called Cyber Stars. Y'all go download it. It's three dollars on um Gumroad. I also have a free one on there. If y'all want something similar to this, but uh free. It's not as it's not as um what's the word I'm looking for? All right, it's not as detailed, I guess you could say. These are more complex shapes that you can't just get with Illustrator, you know what I'm saying? You have to, it's not It's not hard to make. Some of these some of these, some, some of these shapes are simple, but it's more, um, they're more creative. I guess I could say like that. They're more creative putting together some of these shapes. And that's why it costs, but it's only $3, so I'm about to hit 100 subscribers, so, you know what I'm saying? Show some love, show some love. So yeah, what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna go and grab some of these elements from this pack. Let's grab one of these targets, stars. Let's grab one of these hologram globes. Let's grab this. And I control C it. I bring it to this document. And I control V. What I like to do is just throw it off to the side so I can just quickly grab, organize it right quick. So I can just quickly grab something and go. Oh, I also wanted these, these. Mm. Let's go with that. So yeah, pretty cool icons you can use for your logos. So what we can do is just customize this type a little bit. So you can get your direct selection tool. Like I said, you can select multiple points. So I'll select the T. Right, hold on. <clears throat> Sorry, it's computer small. Let's just expand this T up a little bit. Expand it right there. And then let's move. T out like this. Just to give it a more like futuristic look. It looks very futuristic to me. Select these points here. Mm -hmm. And then let's make this O a little bigger. Oh, 
but make sure it still matches. Okay, we're gonna roll with that for right now. The simple, real simple. And then we can what we can do is let's give uh, let's give this a uh, outline. So I'm just give it a white stroke for right now. It's just real simple. It's not a client job, so I'm gonna just show you <clears throat> how easy it is. Right. So let's get this. All right. So let's get this sort of star kind of swoop effect. <clears throat> let's go and send that to the back. So it's like this, um, I don't know, kind of like, I look at this, I think of the Matrix, I don't know why. Let's get. Let's get this. No, no, no. Let's get this. Let's make it <clears throat> slightly bit bigger. Give this a white stroke too. <clears throat> Put it on the outside. And boom. Oh, it's kind of. I don't like that star right there. Actually. And yeah. That's pretty much a Y2K logo. Let's kind of do it like this. Yep. Then what I can do is I can go to object, expand, not expand, path, offset path. Let's offset it, make sure it's round, and let's offset it by like 12 pixels, right? Then what I do is I join everything together and I turn it into a stroke, right? Let's get rid of white fill so you can still see what's going on. And what I do is I just go in, get rid of the inside so we just have the outline so it could be more, more clean. Okay, now we got this. Let's go ahead and expand this, make this a little bigger. And then do it like that. And boom, there we go. Got a Y2K logo. Pretty simple. And yeah, you want to always make sure your logos can work in black and white before you add color. But it's pretty simple for right now. So let me know what y'all think about this logo. Comment down below what y'all want to see next. Let me know how this audio sounds or how the video looks. I might start doing videos like this from now on. But yeah, uh, I'll catch y'all in the next video. See y'all later. Peace.